Hi. So, to, this is Chris Cartea, as you probably have guessed, you probably see the title on the channel. It says, hi, this is Chris Cartea. So, got a war tomorrow. This is a very unique war. We're doing what's called a backpack war, where basically it's like an extended humans versus zombies game, where you have to have everything on you at all times. You don't get to go between rounds and set everything up on benches. You've got to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving on. Ah, my hair's being crazy. Ah, should I burn it? Nah, let's not burn it. So, don't get any ideas, guys. Fire's not your friend when it's on your head. Okay, so of course, I noticed something. I'm at a little bit of an advantage, a couple actually. First off, this war is being done at a park, private invitations, I can't tell you exactly where it is, at a park where you have water, you have a big, like, marina, a lagoon. It's about, in some places, 150 feet, okay? And my blasters, some of them, flat on a good shot can hit 150, and if you arch it a little, you're for sure going to hit 150. So this means, of course, if I see people running the other way, I could try to take a lucky shot and nail him, or at least terrify the holy shit out of him. Now, second is the fact that pretty much I'm mobile. Okay, so this is the bat belt rig. As I usually show up in another pair of pants, I, I throw on, like I'm wearing now. So, yep, yeah, see? Uh huh. Uh huh. Da -da -da -da. See, I'm wearing pants. Um, and what happens is I go to a bathroom and I change out. The day before, uh, let me explain loadout procedures the, f the day before a match. Typically. What I usually do is I'll have everything ready on the rig. Uh, this is the off-spec towel. We'll talk about this a little later. Um, this is the, the triad. It's a backup weapon with a holster rig on it. And uh, this is my, my triple. Now, right now, my, my ultra match is in the bathroom, standing up on end, because I just sprayed it with, with Teflon lube. And what I'm doing is I'm having the Teflon lube dry. And then I'm going to polish it out with about uh, 5 or 10 rounds. And what that does is it takes it and it, um, it, 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 it makes it so that you have a dry lubricant on your brass. It does help, especially because sometimes these heads over here give you a lot of problems. Um, the other thing is I had to set up a backpack. Well, let me show you this. A couple things I'm trying tomorrow. Number one. We're trying the new Stage 3 kit, which everybody will tell you is a bitch right now. A lot of people don't understand the double claws that open up and close as it's firing. The other thing is <laughs> this thing right here, the barrel assembly. Now, it doesn't come like this, okay? It doesn't. It comes in one solid piece. But I took it apart trying to fix the seal on it. As you can see, I did fix the seal, and then I found out that this volume was too big because it lets too much gas through. It's just, on a perfect brand new dart, okay, maybe. Or maybe on like a Pack D or an Explorer dart where your diameter's a little bigger, okay, maybe. But not on this. Your biggest problem is you have several places where it leaks air. Um, number one, okay, you can have it just like this in the front, but then you have all these little holes in, in here. And even with these screw holes, you still had like these two, two holes. I was gonna seal them up, but I said, nah, that's another half inch. And then you have this junction. Let me show you. Well, it's here and here. Can you see that the junction between here and here in the center is higher than the rest of the table? It's to give it, when you screw it down, the center part more bite. However, what it really needs is like an O-ring. If it had an O-ring in there, uh, it would be just fine. But it's all for loss anyway, because all this, all this, and your your breach um, is just to... It's just, it's just to... It's just too. It's just too much area here. Let me uh, let me open this up because I might be selling this to a friend if he shows up. Um, so here's the stage three right here. Okay. Okay. So here's here's this is what how it comes. By the way, it comes like this. No Teflon. No anything. Okay. That's that's how it comes. All right. But you got also this part, which is much more nicely built. Okay, so first off on these, see these two little metal tabs here, okay? Make sure they're down, because if they're not down, uh, sometimes it, let, it, doesn't, it doesn't open up when, when you don't feel that. That's real tight springs, real tight. So it does push the dots in real nice, and it is real nice. The other thing, use some Teflon loop. Not only on this, but, but spray, spray the dart down and put a barrel and put a, a dart in there. 1,000% difference. 1,000%. 
I mean, it's it's just so much better. I mean, even like that, with just the screw end on it, which is the way I have my Ospec Retaliator right now, I just have it with that, okay? It's a world of difference. It's a world of difference. And the shots are, are, are much, much more consistent. It's nicer. There's no more blowout dark because you're using a 14 kilogram spring and a standard breech. And I used to blow out, I would say, in every 50 shots, at least three or four. Um, and now it doesn't do that. So I'm really, really happy. The other thing I'm trying tomorrow is I'm trying a new 7 kilogram spring in a prototype Super Velos. Yes, this, yes, it usually uses a black tactical, which is per se faster, but that's just per se. So there's my backpack set up right there. I don't know if you can see in there. Okay, I've got three more, i got four more magazines in here, on top of the three that are on the triple back here. And when I load up magazines, I load up 15, so that the next day I just load them up with another three each, and I don't have any uh, dart squash. Okay, so I... Now this was just for storage stake only, the 12 is sitting down here. I loaded this with the 7K spring, because obviously I'm using a 14K on the R spec, I really don't need the 7K spring, and I decided to play with it. How well does it do in a retaliator versus a black tactical? I've been using black tactical springs for a year now, okay, on my, on my retaliators, and I gotta say, they're probably one of my favorite springs for a nice smooth operation and power to get my blaster up to 95 feet flat. However, the 7K with the modifications I do seemed like it had a little more umph to it. I don't know why. So then I got my Magnus right here. Okay, it's loaded up with three dots. Now I load it like this, not ready to go. Okay, but what I do is I ha I have it in battery but not prime. Now how do you how do you do this with the Magnus? How do you get in the battery without messing it up? Okay, first off, this is with the Stampede spring and your normal coil and all locks removed. Okay. Lock it back like this, but look at your dart hop bobs up. You see how the next dart bobs? So here's what you do. As the next, as you're pushing this in, and I gotta do this opposite handed to show you. You push that down, when it finally is over, you close it. Now, now your blaster's in battery, you can let them have it. Real simple. Real simple. Okay? Um, I'll tell you right now, this is as powerful as a panther with uh, dart modification. It, it, it's pretty good. I mean, Everyone's like, wow, i got to see that. What mod did you do to that? And I just told them, nah, just put a stampede spring in there. Not much. I'm wondering if the 4K um, black, um, orange mod work spring would work in there. The 4K uh, stampede spring. I don't think the 6K. I think the 6K would be too big for that coil. But I don't know. Okay, so here's some extra uh, Mega Darts. Remember, the Mega doesn't get used that much. All right? It really doesn't. Um, I usually put this in front of the mags. So it sits like that, okay? All right, so the next thing, it's a backpack war. What you need, what is gonna happen? What happens if your Auspec goes down or your Super Veloce goes down? Sure, I got a Super Veloce as a, as, as a, as, as a backup. I also have all the, um, the barrel ends to do, uh, to do, to, to practice with a sniper. And I'm, notice I have the arch sights on this thing. I do arch shots and I am very good at it. Especially when I got a big lake I was going to just go with just the off-spec, but then I was thinking, no, I need more than flat shooting for this battle. And, I, and, and the pistols are nice, but the pistols are a little bit more take shots from trees or from a distance and just, you know, just scare the shit out of people. Uh, you may notice the barrel mod right there, the buffer right here. There's a piece of Velcro that snugs up in there so this barrel doesn't dance everywhere. Um, you need that if you want to reliably, consistently shoot. Uh, at people and know where your shots are consistently going to go. If you don't do that, you're fucked. End of story. You're just on. Alright? So let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Any more bad news? Um, the Boat of Prey is doing pretty well. I was able to basically shoot it from the street. My friend Aaron Kemp, we were, I was showing him on a rainy day. And I was shooting it from the street to the inside of the park. One of them hit the fence line that was 180 feet away. Most of the shots were, I would say, average about 130, 140. Not that, that much, but there it is, you know. As in any brass barrel blaster, what I noticed was uh, Orange Modworks came up with the thing said, okay, don't use W-coated darts for the Stage 3 kit. I tried that with the brass, and you know what? They're right. I mean, with 17, 30 seconds brass, the W-coated dots, they do horrible. They, they, they catch the brass too easy. Um, every time I, I seem to have a, a, a busted-up dart, I, I had a busted-up dart bin, 
and I notice that most of them are W's. The ones that curl up, yeah, they're W-coated. The heads are bigger. For some reason, they make the heads bigger. Um, so you're actually better off not using W-coated. Just throw them out. If, you, if you're using seal breed, just don't throw them out. Actually, you're just better off using Stephens, but <coughs> I play with around people that are using Elites, so, you know, if you got Stephens, you go to battle with 50 Stephens, and everybody else has got 2,000 Elites. Eh, it's on one side. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. So here's the mad bird. That is. Bird of prey. There's lots of ways you can shoot this. Um, you can coil this this back up over like so. Over like so. And you can put this over your back over there. And shoot it normal, okay? Um, bird of prey, I use I use this to hold my priming handle, which is nothing more than a sharpie marker. Um, but I really like a little bit more like that and that. I like to run the drawstring under so it doesn't curl this up when I'm firing. Um, this has got a Teflon lube outside of it and inside of it. It does protect it quite a bit and it also makes it so it's a lot slicker. Um, I'm using the back grooves here to line up with the front groove there. As you can see the barrel sort of points down. The reason is because the spring here tends to pull everything down. So I have it compensated here. That's the flat shot right there. See? So it goes between the grooves like that. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, the off-spec, I don't know, my, my, my future models might be like that, where I just take this and I and I bob it down like so. But I really do like these rear notches, and I really think if I make this shorter, it's just kind of look geeky. Maybe it already does. I think it looks like a cool King Luger pistol. Like that's just my opinion. So I'm, I'm carrying this baby. But I'm carrying this one. This The game I'm playing, the one who's hosting the game, has a bow rule. One hit kills for bows. Now, if I've got a blaster... Now, this one has confirmed on video. 152 flat. I've done it, okay? The other gold top did about 150 flat. Um, averaged about maybe... I would say 125, 130. The original 16K was, was probably 110 to 120, but could peak about 130. Um, this baby is doing 130, 140, and it's peaking around, I would say, 170, 180. But, you know, it's a prototype. Don't quote me on that. Because that 170, 180 is so random that I can just call it a lucky shot. I, I really consistently just does 130, 140. But if I arch it just a little, I'm hitting across that lake. And who the fuck's going to get me? No one's bringing an explorer. No one's bringing a snap pull. It's sort of a, it's sort of a, a stock chassis enough gun. Um, and so, I mean, it's going to be crazy. Uh, so, I'm with this. It's just three shots, but I'm carrying it on the holster as, as a backup. You know, the gold, the, the new gold top. Gold top means it's confirmed 150 flat on a range test video. Um, <clears throat> so at any rate, I, as you can see, I sort of set up like a, like a mad assassin. Maybe I am mad. Who knows? Only time will tell. <laughs> of course, I'm being silly. So, anywho, uh, oh, another thing I did is I tore this off right here. You see, there was that front ring on there. I just thought, eh. I was going to put a tube back here, but I'm like, okay, I had to use this anyway because people would bitch about about this. You know, I had one lady bitch about me shooting out in public. Uh, the other one, the, uh, the the Ultra Match, you know, having me shoot that out there. Um, yeah, right. I was in the middle of a pathway, sure, but there was nobody there. It was like it was like eight in the morning. I mean, who cares, you know? But you know, you run into one stuffed up, puffy up. Uh, I've been a widow for thirty years, woman who's bitter or whatever, and you do run into problems. But I will say this: she's right. Okay, maybe it's not the middle of the weekend. Maybe we don't have like a hundred spectators all over the place. But still, it's a walkaway kid. Right, it's not like this park where I usually range test. But the brick pattern is the same. That's why I wanted to play there. There was a aerobics class up here, and I didn't want to hit anybody. Okay, it was nice, calm wind. It looked, it was beautiful. Well, as bitchy as this lady was, she was right. So, and anyway, I'm not gonna range test on the strand again, on the Marvin Brody Trail again. I'm not gonna do it. Okay, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, I know, middle of a bike path. Why the fuck are you doing that, Chris? Because it was nice. 
I mean, wouldn't you want to see the, the ocean on a nice day? There was nobody around except the pop, pop, pop of my blasters. I know, I'm silly. And I think the lady thought I was some sort of teenager. I think a lot of people do. So, anywho, this is Chris Cartier. I'm going to finish this up. And don't you go changing. A shout out to the Nerf Modders Welcome for the Nurse Modders welcome form for accepting me back in and being cool with me all this time and teaching me the values of not being a hot, you know, a butt hurt hot ass when it comes to ranges. Everybody knows relatively they see it fire. Who cares, kid? I mean, very few people post actual range deaths. And who needs to? You put up a mod, you get a pretty good idea. Okay, this guy with, with this guy with an air gun is gonna pull probably 110, 120. This guy with a with a 3K is 130, maybe 140. Um, this guy with a long shot, you now he's got 140 potential. I mean, everybody knows that. The more important thing is that what did you mod it with, and getting the help that you deserve and that you need from other people. It's more about helping each other out, and it's more about a community of if you need if you have a problem you, you need it, and that's what drew me back to the forum was that I was missing that, and, and I would browse a forum even not being a member of it. And I would see, oh god, I can help that guy out with that. Oh, let's send him a PM. And I, and I did that like a bunch of times. And it finally just got to me, okay, Chris, you gotta learn just how to behave, okay, not be so stubborn, and just do it, okay? Just do it, just do it, okay? And swallow your pride, you were wrong to begin with, just, just be cool, you know, and I did, you know, but that was the thing, I couldn't leave the form, really, I just couldn't, I, every time I saw someone with a problem that I had a good idea to help, or I believed I did, I had to type a message, I had to send them something, and so it's like, Chris, you love this, why leave it, why leave these people behind, why, okay, you're the adult, you should be a bigger man. Even besides, it wasn't their fault anyway. So, at any rate, this is Chris Cartea. In all humbleness, take care.